playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodor are very happy. They are all pleased to work on the Fat Controller's railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to, like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting. I have news too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favourite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he's the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. <whistles> Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botti at the docks. Miss Botti looked very grand. I'm pleased to be travelling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's trucks of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Will it come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks and then I'll take Miss Botty to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Botty smiled sweetly from her carriage. Charlie pulled up alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. Yippee! <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. The funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Botti could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. Who's your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun. And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti, it is an honor to have you visit our steamworks. Kevin. Sorry, boss. And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botty sang to the steamworks. <laughs> then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botty straight to the town hall, but he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botty to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there! We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun! Thomas wanted to be fun. So he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Alicia Botti juddered and jumped. And the couplings jiggered and jiggled. Looser and looser. 
At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> and this is even more fun! We must go, Miss Botty. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye! If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Knapford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. Let's race again. Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking the fat controller to the town hall. Thomas gasped. <gasps> I'm late. I must wish like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late. I mustn't be late. Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had come loose. Thomas raced on to the town hall alone. Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir. The fat controller looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabel? And where is Miss Botty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. The fat controller boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabel, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabel and Miss Botty. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabel first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Botty singing. Hooray! Thomas found Miss Botty by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Botty singing. Miss Botty, we must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Botty cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabel. The fat controller was cross. At last, Thomas. You've made Miss Botty very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to and such fun. That made Thomas smile. And so did his fun friend, Charlie. Slippy Sodor. It was a very special day on the island of Sodor. The Mr. Bubbles clown show was coming to town. Mr. Bubbles was famous. He could blow the biggest bubbles ever seen. All the engines were happy and excited, except for Thomas. He had a cracked funnel and had to puff to the steamworks for repairs. At the steamworks, everything was huffing and puffing and steaming and wheeshing. Everything except Thomas. He waited sadly on the turntable for Victor to arrive. Thomas didn't like it when he needed repairs. It meant waiting inside and not having fun out on his branch line. Don't look so miserable, Thomas. We'll find you a nice spare funnel and have you out and about in no time. Kevin, let's see what we have for our good friend Thomas. Yes, boss. Coming right up. Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Oh, Kevin. Well, that won't do at all, my friend. This funnel is much too small. 
Kevin, let's try something a little larger. Yes, boss. Right away, boss. Oh, suffering so door, Kevin. What are you doing? Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Yes, we know, Kevin. We know. Try this one for size, Thomas. No, 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 no. This one is too large. We only have one more spare funnel, boss. I'll be back in two toots of a whistle. Let's hope it's a good fit, my friend. Or you'll be here for quite a while. <sighs> Here it is, Thomas. Oops, uh, sorry, Thomas. It was a slip of the hook. I know, Kevin, I know. Magnificent! A perfect fit. This funnel makes me feel silly. Not at all, my friend. It's... it's... splendid. It will help you puff very well until your old funnel is fixed. Now, chuff along. I hear that Mr. Bobbers has a very special special for you at Brendam Docks. Thomas chuffed into Brendan. He was very unhappy. Mr. Bubbles was waiting. He was very happy to see Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Mr. Bubbles has a very important job for you, Thomas. This is my very special bubble liquid. It makes the biggest bubbles you have ever seen. I need it for my show this afternoon. Please take it to Knapford Station. So Thomas backed up slowly and carefully to the flatbed and was coupled up. Now, you mustn't spill any of the liquid, Thomas. Puff slowly and carefully. Yes, sir. We'll meet you at Knapford. Then James chuffed up. Hello, Thomas. Ha! That's a funny funnel! <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back, and he didn't like James laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away as quickly as he could. He forgot all about going slowly and carefully. Later, Thomas stopped at a crossing. He saw Gordon. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back, and he didn't like Gordon laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Gordon as quickly as he could. He wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road, but Thomas didn't notice. The fat controller was driving Mr. Bubbles on the road. Then there was trouble. The car skidded and skated right into a muddy ditch. Thomas raced on. He stopped at a signal and saw Henry in a siding. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back, and he didn't like Henry laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Henry as quickly as he could. He still wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. The Fat Controller and Mr. Bubbles drove toward a bridge. Slow down, Thomas! You're spilling my bubble liquid! But Thomas didn't hear them. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. The Fat Controller's car skidded and skated right into a haystack. But Thomas didn't notice. He went even faster. And so did the Fat Controller and Mr. Bubbles. Thomas didn't see them, but he did see a red signal. Thomas put on his brakes. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. The Fat Controller's car skidded and skated right into a pond. But Thomas was too worried about his funny funnel to notice. He raced on towards Knapford. At last, Thomas puffed into Knapford, just as the Fat Controller and Mr. Bubbles arrived. The Fat Controller was very cross. 
Thomas, you were going much too fast. The special bubble liquid splished and sploshed out of the tank. And now the tank is empty. And it's almost time for my show to start. The children will be very disappointed. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. The only special bubble liquid left is at Brendam Docks. Now there isn't time to pick it up before the show. Yes, there is. I'm sure I can puff to Brendam and back in time for your show. <laughs> Very well, Thomas. But this time, you must be careful. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Soon, Thomas arrived back at Brendam Docks. A new tank of bubble liquid was loaded onto his flatbed, and Thomas puffed carefully away. Thomas saw Edward at a crossing. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't like Edward laughing at his funny funnel, but this time Thomas didn't pump his pistons and race away from Edward as quickly as he could. He chuffed carefully onto Knapford. Then Thomas puffed past some children. The children saw his funny funnel. They were excited. They thought Thomas was going to be part of Mr. Bubble's show. Thomas was surprised. He gave the children an extra loud toot. The children laughed even more. Thomas liked to see the children laughing. They're laughing at my funny funnel. It makes them happy. And that made Thomas happy. Thomas steamed back into Knackford. The children cheered. Well done, Thomas. You haven't spilled one drop of my special bubble liquid. And you're just in time for my show. Later, the children clapped and cheered at the Mr Bubbles clown show. They had never seen such big bubbles. Then the children spotted that Thomas's funny funnel looked just like Mr Bubbles's hat. Thank you, Thomas. The funniest engine on Sodor. Soon everyone was laughing. And Thomas most of all. <laughs> Tickle Pink. James was the brightest red engine on the island of Sodor. His bright red paint made him feel very proud and it made him feel very special. One morning, James was about to puff out of Tidmouth's sheds. The fat controller arrived to see him. James, you are to have a new coat of paint. You must puff straight to the steamworks. James was pleased. Thank you, sir. I will be the smartest engine on the whole island. James whistled with pride. James puffed proudly into the steamworks. The workmen were waiting. First, they took off James's old coat of red paint. Then, they applied a special pink paint. The pink paint was to go under the new red coat. It was to keep the water out. Soon, James was covered from fender to firebox in bright pink paint. Just then, the fat controller arrived. My granddaughter is having her birthday party today. Emily was to pick her up at Maithwaite Station, but she has broken down. The other engines are busy. You must collect the children and take them to the party. But, sir, I'm not ready. You're quite ready enough, James. Leave right away. The party starts at tea time. You mustn't be late. The fat controller left. James was upset. Oh, no. Pink is a silly colour. I don't want anyone to see me looking silly. James puffed up to a junction. Emily was there. She was waiting for the workman. Cinders and ashes. You're bright. Pink, James? Emily laughed and laughed. 
Oh, no! Everyone is going to laugh at me because I'm pink! James didn't want to be laughed at. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. If I see any other engines on the way to the children, I'll hide! James chuffed through the countryside. Ahead, he could see Toby puffing along the track. I don't want Toby to see my pink paint. He'll think I'm silly. I'll hide under this tree until he's gone. So James chuffed under the branches of a willow tree. Toby puffed slowly towards him. James kept as quiet as he could so that Toby wouldn't hear him. Suddenly, James heard a whistle he knew well. It was Gordon. Clickety-clack, express on the track. With a whoosh and a whoosh and a whistling wind, Gordon thundered down the express line. The branches of the tree blew up in the air. There was James in his bright pink paint. Toby stopped. He was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes, James. You're a big pink engine. <laughs> James felt very silly. He didn't like being laughed at, so he steamed swiftly away. James puffed on towards Maithwaite. I mustn't be late for the children. Then James saw Diesel. Oh, no! It's Diesel. He's sure to laugh. I have to hide quickly. James saw some trucks. They were piled high with coal. James puffed into the siding and hid behind the trucks. Oh, this is a good hiding place. Then Diesel oiled into the siding. Fizzling fenders. Diesel had to shunt the coal trucks. Diesel shunted away the trucks that James was hiding behind. So James puffed to the next trucks. Then Diesel shunted those away as well. Quickly, James rolled behind the last two trucks. Then Diesel shunted them away. Oh, no! Diesel was surprised. What are you doing, James? You're a big pink steamy! <laughs> James felt terrible. Being laughed at by Diesel was worst of all. So James chuffed quickly away. James knew he was getting late. He had to pick up the children before tea time. I'll take a shortcut through this tunnel. That way, I'm sure to chuff to Maithwaite on time. James puffed out of the tunnel. Then he heard a whistle. It's Gordon! Oh, no! I don't want Gordon to laugh at my silly pink paint. I have to hide. So James reversed back into the tunnel and waited. Gordon pulled up to the tunnel. He could see steam. Who's hiding in there? Express coming through. Come on out. James didn't want to come out. He was sure Gordon would laugh at him. Then Thomas and Percy puffed up. What's happening? Who's in there? I don't know, but the Express can't wait. James knew the engines were waiting for him, and so were the children. If I keep hiding, I'll be late to pick up the children, and they'll be late for their party. So with a puff and a huff, James chuffed slowly out of the tunnel. He was very unhappy. James, uh, you're all uh, uh, pink. Uh, what a funny colour. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hide too if I was bright pink. James <laughs> felt terrible. All the engines were laughing. But James knew what he had to do. I feel very silly, but I can't let the children down. James hurried to Maithwaite as fast as his pistons could pump. James saw Spencer at a junction. Spencer thought James looked very silly. <laughs> oh dear, James. Bright pink really isn't your colour. <laughs> James didn't like this, 
But this time, even though he felt silly, he didn't hide. I mustn't be late for the children. Then Jane saw Henry passing by. <laughs> My word, you do look pink. But James didn't hide. He felt silly, but he didn't stop. Must collect the children. Must collect the children. James puffed towards Maithwaite. He could see the children waiting. I'm sure the children will laugh too. They will think I look very silly. And he steamed sadly onto the station. James pulled into Maithwaite. The fat controller's granddaughter didn't laugh. And she didn't think James looked silly at all. She smiled. She was very excited and very happy. James, you're a pink engine. Pink is my favourite colour. James couldn't believe it. Do you really like pink? I love pink and so do all my friends. Look, pink, pink is, is our, our favourite, favourite colour. James was so happy it made his boiler bubble. I'm a very lucky engine. James puffed proudly into the town hall just in time for the party. The children laughed and clapped their hands. James the bright pink engine was the hero of the day. Creaky Cranky. It was the spring holiday on Sodor. There was to be a party for the children at the Duke and Duchess's new summer house. All the engines were very excited and very busy. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. James and Henry were passing through. Good morning, James. Good morning, Henry. Where are you puffing to? I'm taking these straw bales to the summer house for the children to climb on. I'm taking wood to make a stage for the children's show and barrels of lemonade to drink. How wonderful. I'll see you later at the summer house. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? It's the Duke and Duchess's party day. Party smarty. I don't go to parties. I'm stuck here loading and unloading all day. I haven't had a moment to rest my hook. That load is for me. It's eggs for the children to paint. Hurry up, Cranky. You're creaky, Cranky. What's the matter? Are the eggs too heavy a load for you? <laughs> Cranky didn't like Thomas's joke. He didn't like being called creaky. No, they're not too heavy for me. They're light as fluff. <laughs> You're not strong enough to pull anything heavier than fluff, tiny Thomas. That's why Henry and James have the heavy loads. Now, Thomas didn't like Cranky's joke. Fizzling fireboxes. I'm as strong as any other engine. You're not as strong as me. I can lift much heavier loads than you could ever pull. Thomas really didn't like that. We'll see, Cranky. I have lots of time to deliver the eggs. First, I have to prove Cranky wrong. James has a heavy load. I'll go and find James. So Thomas steamed sternly out of the docks. Thomas found James at the junction by the washdown. Hello, James. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of wood and barrels for you? You can stay here at the washdown. Then you'll be perfectly polished for the party. James thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So James was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of wood and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off for the docks. Thomas chuffed back into the docks. You again. What are you doing with that wood? This flatbed is very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift it. Cranky looked at the flatbed of wood and barrels. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the wood. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed into the air. Thomas's boiler buzzed. Told you so. 
You're still creaky cranky. And you're still tiny Thomas. That made Thomas very cross. I will prove cranky wrong and still have time to deliver the eggs. I'm sure Henry had an even heavier load. I'll go and find Henry. So Thomas steamed stormily away. Thomas found Henry waiting by the coal hopper for his special coal. Hello, Henry. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of straw bales for you? Then you can wait here for your special coal. Henry thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So Henry was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of straw bales and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was very heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off once more for the docks. Soon, Thomas puffed back into the docks. You again? Now, what are you doing with those straw bales? This flatbed is very, very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift this. Cranky looked at the flatbed of straw bales. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the straw. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised a flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky cranky. And you're still tiny Thomas. That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly, Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Bubbling boilers! Creaky Cranky is lifting me! Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and judded. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no! Cranky's crane arm had broken, and it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck, high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Thomas! What are you doing up there? I'm sorry, sir. I was... You are causing confusion and delay. The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken, and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then the Fat Controller looked at Cranky. And you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame to be as silly as a steamy. Soon a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder. Just as Spencer arrived. Dear, oh dear, Thomas, what a mess. Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer, but he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful, and he had to be really useful. Spencer, I need your help. You are very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me. Will you take the wood, the straw bales and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm, very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. Thomas wished like the wind all the way to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Cranky creaked and now he's cracked. He needs new parts. You've come to the right place, my friend. But a plenty here. We'll have Cranky up and lifting in no time. Soon Thomas's flatbed was loaded with new parts for Cranky. Thank you, Victor. Of course, my friend. Give Cranky my best. And Thomas huffed happily away. 
Thomas puffed into the docks with his heavy flatbed. Cranky was still looking crumpled. Here you are, Cranky. We'll have you fixed in no time. Thank you, Thomas. That's a heavy flatbed. You know, you're not tiny. And you're not creaky. Cranky laughed. <laughs> and that made Thomas <laughs> laugh too. <laughs> Hero helps out. The engines on the island of Sodor like to be busy. They heave and haul. They huff and puff. And most of all, they like to please the fat controller. One morning, Hero chuffed in to Napford Station. There was hustle and bustle, noise and steam. It was another busy day at Knapford. Then, the fat controller hurried onto the platform without his hat. Hero gasped. <gasps> sir, good morning, sir. I hope the day finds you well, sir. The day finds me with much too much to do, Hero. That's how the day finds me. I can see, sir. What are you staring at, Hero? Nothing, sir. Just your hat, sir. Excuse me. Edward puffed in. Hello, Hero. You look worried. Not at all. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. In all my long years, I've never seen that before. <coughs> Hero was worried for the fat controller. Sir, can I help you, sir? It's a very busy day, Hero. I have to visit the thin controller. I must talk with him about the railways. Hero knew this was important. I understand, sir. I must be away from Knapford. Of course, sir. Now Edward was worried. Sir? Not now, Edward. Edward was still worried. I have to pick up visitors from Brendam Docks. I don't know where to take them. Hero didn't know where the visitors should go either but he didn't want to bother the Fat Controller. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Take them to the hills, Edward. They will enjoy the hills. So Edward puffed away to Brendam Docks and the hills. Hero felt happy. He was master of the railway as he liked to be. Hero puffed up to the water tower. Thomas was there. He was taking on water. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. Where are you going, Thomas? To Knapford. I must ask the Fat Controller where to take these crates of benches and tables. Hero still didn't want to bother the Fat Controller. The Fat Controller is busy now, Thomas. He will tell you where to go later. You have time to visit your friend. Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hero was happy. He was helping the Fat Controller. Hero steamed up to a junction. Percy was there. He had a flatbed full of quacking ducks. Hello, Percy. How are you? Percy was worried. Hello, Hero. These ducks are very noisy. They want to go swimming. I have to find the Fat Controller. He will tell me where I must take them for a swim. Hero still didn't want to bother the Fat Controller. The Fat Controller is very busy, Percy. Perhaps you could puff to the Finland. The ducks will be happy there. Thank you, Hero. Hero was happy. Helping the Fat Controller was the best job he had ever had. 
hero huffed happily to a crossing. The fat controller was there. Hero, while I was with the thin controller, I heard worrying news. Farmer McCall is waiting for his ducks. There are no tables or benches for the concert at tea time. And Edward is late for a concert at the town hall. <gasps> Hero gasped. The fat controller was cross. The fat controller was cross with him. And it was all his fault. Hero felt worse than ever. He had been master of the railway, and now he was master of the muddle. I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I knew you were very busy. I wanted to help, so I told the engines what to do. I didn't want to bother you, sir. <gasps> the fat controller gasped. You didn't want to bother me? I am controller of the railway. Nothing is more important to me than my engines being really useful. Hero gulped. I know that now, sir. I'm not master of the railway. I'm master of the muddle. I can put this right. Please give me time. And Hero wished quickly away. Hero found Edward in the hills. Hello, Hero. My visitors are very happy. Good, Edward. But now, you must take the visitors to Knapford Station. The fat controller will give you your orders. I thought we weren't to bother the fat controller, Hero. I was wrong, Edward. The fat controller didn't want that at all. And Hero steamed swiftly away. Hero whooshed up to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. I'm having a wonderful time with the piglets. Good, Thomas, my friend. But now, you must puff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is waiting with orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller, Hero. I was wrong, Thomas. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. Bye, Hero. Hero clickety-clacked onto the Fenland track. Percy was there. The ducks were swimming happily. Hello, Percy. Hello, Hero. The ducks are very happy. I'm pleased to hear that, Percy. But now, you must take the ducks to Knapford. The Fat Controller has orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller. I was wrong, Percy. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. But how can I get the ducks back into their crate? I will help you, Percy. Hero blew his whistle. It sounded like a duck quacking. The ducks flapped and flew into their crates. Thank you, Hero. Later, the fat controller had given his orders to the engines. Now, you all know what you have to do. Chuff away and be really useful. Hero puffed forward. And what shall I do, sir? You, Hero, will do what you have always done. You will be helpful, Hero. Helping me. And nothing could have made Hero happier. Henry's Good Deeds There are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. The engines know their names and their songs. One day the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. The fat controller arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird, so a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your carriages at all times. And remember not to frighten the Warbler. Henry was worried for the Warbler. 
Do you think the Sodor Warbler will be scared of engines? No, Henry. Not if you're really useful. And I need you to be really useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver a nesting pole to Bluff's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um, what's a nesting pole? It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds build their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Henry? Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Warbler will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Henry. Henry was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Henry clickety-clacked along the track. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Henry chuffed slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Henry. I'm letting Farmer McCole cross with his sheep. Henry could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas, you helped me. That's a good deed. Well done. You're welcome, Farmer McCall. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Henry puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed and they will say, Well done, Henry. This made Henry feel very happy. I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Henry huffed happily on. Soon, Henry saw Farmer Trotter's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm, those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Henry saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to roll in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So Henry stopped and the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. Henry was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. I didn't help at all. Suddenly an idea flew into Henry's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Henry pumped his pistons, his wheels whirred, he puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help, Farmer Trotter. But it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Henry's steam and the wear of his wheels. They scattered and clattered into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples. But now they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bust my buffers. My idea wasn't a good deed at all. Just then, Thomas puffed up on the down line. Annie and Clarabelle were full of visitors to see the Sodor Warbler. Cinders and ashes! How am I going to puff through? The Sodor Warbler has been spotted in the Fenland fields. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fenland fields. We'll be there in good time. Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Henry. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Henry's carriage. Henry felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed, and I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Henry puffed and huffed his hardest all the way to the Fenland fields. Here we are. Watch out for the warbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the carriage doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the Sodor Warbler away. Henry felt very happy. 
At last, I've been helpful. I've done a good deed. Henry tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colourful bird flapped and flew from a tree high into the sky and away. It was the Sodor Warbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. Fizzling fireboxes. The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Henry steamed sadly away. I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors. But I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds. And I haven't delivered the nesting pole. Henry felt terrible. Henry huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, well done, Henry, to me. Henry waited at a junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole. The fat controller will be cross with me. Oh dear, oh dear. Suddenly, a colourful bird flew from a tree. Henry was too sad to smile at the bird. The bird landed on Henry's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So Henry and the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. Henry puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodor Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased. They were amazed. They smiled and pointed and took out their cameras. Henry was surprised. Oh, the visitors seem very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, well done, Henry. Well done, Henry. You have brought the soda warbler to us. Hooray for Henry! Henry blinked and blushed. The bird I carried on my buffer was the Sodor Warbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Henry. Henry was so proud, his firebox fizzed and his boiler bubbled. And this time I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Warbler looked snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes its new home. Welcome home, Mr. Warbler. And well done, Henry. The biggest present of all. For all the engines on the island of Sodor, there are jobs to be done, visitors to meet, <laughs> and friends to greet. One day, there was a very special friend to greet. Hero was coming back to Sodor. He was to help with the summer visitors. Thomas and Percy waited for him at Brendam Docks. I'm so excited, my firebox is fizzing. And my boiler is bubbling. Hero, our special friend, is coming back to Sodor. Hello, my good friends. I have missed you. We missed you too, Hero. The three engines tooted and hooted with happiness. Welcome back, Hero. First, you must go to the steamworks. Victor will check your engine after your long journey. Of course, sir. Every day, I want to be a really useful engine. Then you must go to Knapford Station. I will meet you there. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Hero puffed proudly away. I want there to be a welcome party for Hero at Knapford. Percy, you must collect Lady Hat and bring her to the party. Thomas, you must tell the engines to chuff quickly to Knapford for the party. Then the Fat Controller left. Thomas and Percy were excited. Oh my! A welcome party will make Hero very happy. A welcome present would make Hero even happier. That's a good idea. I must go now, Thomas. Lady Hat will be waiting. 
Then, Thomas steams slowly away. I'm sure I'll find something special for Hero. I'll look as I puff around the island, telling my friends about the party. Thomas clickety-clacked along the track. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at Farmer McColl's farm. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to Farmer McColl's farm. Emily was there. She was collecting straw. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's exciting. Good luck, Thomas. Emily puffed away. Thomas didn't tell her about the party at Knapford. He was too busy looking for a welcome present. Thomas saw the big brown barn. Perhaps Hero would like a barn. He could keep special things safe in a barn. But the barn is too big. And Thomas steamed slowly away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at the quarry. So Thomas huffed happily to the quarry. Mavis, James, Toby and Henry were there. They were busy shunting slate trucks. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Henry, James and Toby chuffed away to shun trucks. Thomas didn't tell them about the party at Knapford. Thomas looked all around the quarry, but all he could see was Sodor Slate. Slate is very special to Sodor, but... Slate is too small to be a present. I must look for something else. So Thomas chuffed away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then Thomas gasped. The steamworks. I'm sure there'll be something special there. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully to the steamworks. Hello, Kevin. I'm looking for a welcome present for Hero. It has to be something special. Thomas saw an old bell. I'm sure Hero would like a bell. Then everyone would hear him coming. Good idea, Thomas. Good idea. But when Kevin picked up the bell, it clanged and clanked. It rang and rattled. Trembling tracks. That's too noisy. Hero will soon be at Knapford to see the Fat Controller. Bust my buffers! I must hurry! Thomas raced out of the steamworks. He didn't tell Victor and Kevin about the party either. Thomas raced into Knapford Station. Hero was waiting, all alone. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes! I haven't found a welcome present for Hero. And I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then his boiler bubbled and his wheels whirred. Hello, Hero. Goodbye, Hero. And Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McCall's. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvellous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James and Henry were still at the quarry. You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present. A new glowing lamp. That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. 
Kevin, please tell all the engines to race to Napa for Hero's party. My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking, what about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special. Don't you think so, Buzz? Uh, Thomas? Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Thomas clickety-clacked down the track, this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Napford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's welcome party is almost over. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find your welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend, you must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all. And the most special present from Sodor. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right, and so did all his friends. <laughs> <laughs>